this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So if there's a connection between temperature and peak wavelength or color, we can tell a lot about a star just by looking at the light coming from it. For example, a yellow star like our sun would be warmer than a red star, like many of the stars you see in the sky. You can also look in the sky and see that there are stars that are blue. Those stars are hotter than the sun. Now why they're hotter depends on their, well, we'll talk about that later, but it has to do with their size. The bigger the star, the more intense the nuclear reactions that power it, and the higher the temperature. We'll get to that in a later story. What I'd like to talk a little bit about is taking the light from a star like the sun. Taking that light, peeking in the yellow, running it through a prism, and seeing what's there. Surprisingly, astronomers, uh, well, within the last hundred years or so, have taken the light from the sun, run it through a prism, broken it into its component colors, and found something quite intriguing. They have found, when they study the spectrum of the sun, a field known as spectroscopy, the study of spectra. They have found that the sun's light is not uniform. Yes, the sun has a lot of yellow light, but if you look at that yellow light, the blue light, the red light up close, you'll notice that there are places where the sunlight is missing. There are dark lines in the light from the sun that we notice when we run the light through a prism. Those lines, those dark lines, are called absorption lines. Absorption lines. So these absorption lines, absorption lines, I'm having trouble writing that, A-B-S-O-R-P-T-I-O-N, absorption lines are dark lines in the spectrum of the sun. And they catch our attention because they seem to come in patterns. In fact, when you look at these absorption lines, you start to get the sense that you're looking at something like a barcode. Now, if you scan a barcode, it turns out that each barcode is keyed to a certain, in fact, they're called UPC, I believe, Universal Product Codes. They're keyed to a certain book, or garment, or food, and they tell what you're looking at. It turns out that that barcode is just as useful in studying the sun. It turns out the light that's coming from the sun is coming out like it should be in all wavelengths. If this is the core of the sun, all the colors of the rainbow are coming out. The long wavelengths, red, and the, and the shorter wavelengths, uh, orange and yellow, and the, sh and the shorter still wavelengths, blue. They're all coming out of the sun. But on the way out, they pass through the cool outer layers of the sun. So the cool outer layers of the sun. And as they pass through those cool gases, some of those gases like very specific wavelengths, or frequencies, or colors. And so as those colors pass through, certain gases, like hydrogen for example, say, oh, I like these three colors and it snags them up and it absorbs them. And then H2O, so maybe this is for hydrogen, and maybe H2O likes these two wavelengths, these specific colors. Boom, there's water. And maybe nitrogen likes these two specific colors. Before long, you start to realize that using spectroscopy, you can figure out the composition, holy mackerel, you can figure out the composition of the stars, at least the cool outer gases, you can figure out the composition of the stars based on the barcode that comes out, the absorption line spectrum. Cool stuff. So we can figure out a star's temperature, or our temperature. We can figure out the stars or planets composition based on how it absorbs light. And lastly, we can tell something about the object's motion. We'll get to that in a moment.